Hello everyone, I'm really happy and grateful to be here, surrounded for three days by a data visualization expert who's going to talk about all the things they know, uh, which is actually the reason why I decided to talk about the thing that I don't know, to kind of single me out in a really disruptive manner. Uh, before anyone disconnects, be reassured, uh, yes, I'm planning to talk about the thing that I don't know, but what they actually taught me. And uh, I'd like to start by a little anecdote, uh, you know, that kind of traumatic moment of, oh my God, I don't know, uh, in my career. Um, a year and a half, I was uh, following a skills training in data science to learn how to code, like uh, evening classes. And everything was going fine until we started to do statistics. And not just conceptual statistics, but like real hardcore statistics. And one day we reached a climax when we learned uh, how to calculate a confidence interval. Uh, for those who don't have the formula tattooed on their buttocks, it looks like that. And uh, now is probably a good moment to tell that um, I have a literary and philosophical background. I was a teacher for a couple of years. So yeah, I can talk to you in old and middle French, but never in my life before I've been asked to solve an equations with several unknowns, uh, let alone coding. So yeah, I was in distress and apparently I was the only one. Uh, all the other students in the class have some uh, either mathematical or engineering coding backgrounds. And my teacher was not really nice with me. Uh, he was having fun of me, becoming quite uh, cruel in his surprise, I believe, to have for the first time in his class someone as benighted as I was then. So yeah. It was a painful experience. I left the class that day uh, almost in tears, almost. Uh, yeah, quite convinced I would never to achieve anything in the data field. But still, I went to the next courses and then something funny happened. Uh, I started noticing that the people showing up in class uh, was getting lower and lower. And by the end of the training, we were like, four students left. I think we were like 25 when we started. And we were the only ones to present a project in order to graduate. I myself presented a project in NLP, uh, which by the way, wasn't even on the program. I have to study more for that. And yeah, I presented a project, I graduated, and I even received the jury's congratulations. Um, so yeah, this is the story of how I encountered my a statistic enemy uh, and how I learned not to defeat him because um, I still hate that part of my job, but uh, at least tame him. And I think I did so not in spite of my difficulties, but kind of thanks to them. Uh, I believe that if I stayed and graduated when other didn't, it was precisely because it was like so much harder and asking so much more work for me that uh, probably for them. And I think, yeah, those weaknesses actually acted like some kind of deep undercurrent uh, pushing me forward instead of disabilities uh, holding me back. And of course, you could say that this kind of nice story about not abandoning, of using disadvantage as a strength is pretty common. Uh, probably it's a bit cheesy and um, quite relatable about anything, really. Uh, but I would argue that um, for me, it is particularly true and relevant to data visualization because weirdly enough, in data visualization, what you don't know and how you decide to manage it, uh, it's quite uh, crucial. And I would say this is due to two main things. Uh, first one being that um, even though data visualization is just one word, it's apparently just one field. And because usually client would like to have just one interlocutor, um, it is in reality not a single thing. Uh, it's more an addition, an aggregation of different fields, different knowledge, uh, all merged together in some kind of um, Frankenstein iceberg. Uh, you only see uh, the data visualization in the top, but behind it, there is uh, a lot of things uh, happening. And facing such a vast territory of skills, uh, it is quite impossible to master it all. Uh, you, I mean, of course you can have the working understanding of the ensemble, but you have to specialize in it. I, 
I don't think there is so many uh, data realization or Nardo da Vinci out there, you know, some kind of Renaissance man or woman um, who's able to master all those skills combined. And the second reason, I believe, is that still nowadays there is very few data realization primary studies, uh, at least in France, I don't think we have any. And it's mean that um, the big majority of data designers and other people involved, involved in data realization, uh, they come from different backgrounds. They uh, had some first experiences in other fields and only later on they landed in data visualization. Uh, this is my case. Uh, as I said, I first was a literature teacher and then I changed of career path. I became a graphic designer. I worked uh, as an art director in a creative agency for five years before I switched uh, quite recently to become a full-time independent data designer. And talking with other people and reading about other people, I realized that it actually uh, it was actually true for almost everybody in data visualization. And so I get interested in searching uh, where a main data designer known from around the world or, or data friends, or maybe a little bit less famous, uh, where do they came from and what path they took that led them uh, where they are now. And, uh, well, I did uh, data visualization about it, of course, and uh, using that kind of um, clusterization to show really the variety of all their backgrounds. You can really see how kind of everybody uh, came to data visualization with a first set of skills acquired during primary studies and first jobs, uh, but which doesn't cover the whole spectrums of the skills involved in data visualization. And I think that really explains uh, why there is so many different approaches and even sometimes tensions uh, in between the community when um, defining what is data visualization and probably due to this variety of backgrounds. And to use a broad brush, uh, we can say that usually people who have a more um, uh, science-related or journalistic background, they tend to have a more uh, rational approach of design dedicated primarily to the effectiveness of the information uh, transmission. Sorry. And where others who usually have a more design or art-related background, they favor a more sensitive approach of data based on emotional and experiential design. And another consequence of this special configuration of data visualization is the importance and the need really to share, gather and pull skills and knowledge in order to achieve better data visualization. Uh, we can easily find recurrent duos who decide to work together and by combining their skills uh, achieve tremendous work which wouldn't have been possible would have stay, would have they stayed alone in their corners. Um, we have a good example here at Outlier with um, Duncan Gear working with Miriam Quick uh, on load numbers. Uh, Miriam Quick was also known to work on a frequent frequent basis with um, Stephanie Pozavec. Uh, we also have uh, Valentina De Filippo working with uh, Lucia Kukinchukova for the code. I mean, we can find many. And uh, in my on humble level, uh, this is something I started to do quite actively. Uh, you can see here all the people I'm working with and you can really see how I tend to favor working with people who have kind of the opposite set of skills than mine. Uh, kind of makes sense, obviously, because I know they're going to be able to take overs when I hit my own limitation and the other way around, I would be able to take the lead in uh, in my own uh, field of expertise when doing a decentralization and um, it may sound obvious and quite quite a natural thing to do but it it actually required me some maturity to understand and do that to appreciate uh, what people could offer me instead of wanting um, to have their knowledge uh, by myself and i think we all experience at some time, probably more in early stage career, early career stage, <laughs> um, this temptation to learn how to do things all by ourselves, to take every courses, every trainings, 
in an attempt, I think, to fill all those missing spots in our skill that uh, we would see and that would make us feel miserable because we would believe then that we it makes us not legitimate in our field. And of course, don't get me wrong, I still like to learn new things and I'm still taking courses. And of course, as a teacher, I still believe that there is, there's probably not a lot of things as beautiful at this uh, moment of bliss when you learn something new. But at the same time, I, I learned to appreciate and to see that there could be more, there is more in collaboration than in independence and self-sufficiency. And uh, there is this famous quote, everybody know of John Doan, uh, no man is an island. And well, I think um, neither are data designers. And uh, that's what makes sharing networks in data visualization uh, so precious. Um, that data viz society and this meetup of all years are quite good performative examples of this. Um, but there also is those. Um, there also are those um, smaller peer communities, uh, at the one described in Duncan Gear article, building community, uh, where he explained this working group he's in, um, not so much for collaborating, but really more. Uh, as a place to talk about issues in their work, sharing tips, sharing processes, and really pushing each other to move forward by checking each other out every two weeks to um, what they call uh, baby steps. And I also am in that kind of working group. Uh, mine is called uh, Data Suffragettes, Data Suffragettes. And uh, it became so precious to me, especially now that I work as an independent, to have that kind of place where I could find uh, not only moral support, but also practical tips, uh, sharing processes, uh, gathering resources, and even, even sharing subscription fees to online courses and Adobe membership. Uh, yeah, th those are the more uh, practical impacts of this special configuration of data realization as really a collaborative and transversal art. But I believe that there is one more uh, conceptual uh, implication of this. And maybe it's only a personal view, but I would say that um, because I feel doomed to be an incomplete expert, even if my even in my own field of expertise, um, I have to reconsider my position to my audience when doing a data visualization. I, I can't have this vertical posture of the one who know it all, who uh, teaches to the masses uh, from its height. Um, I really like this. I like this image of the apple falling on the end, uh, falling on the head of Newton, because for me, it's really this idea that knowledge could be this striking things, uh, striking you from above, uh, which obviously I don't think it should be. And um, instead, I would favor a more horizontal way of transmitting information. Um, applied to data visualization, it would mean that I should not see myself as the master of data on I mean, top of my audience, but uh, would rather be among them, um, inviting them to see things in a different perspective. And uh, for me, it's really this more Copernican cognitive model of learning. Uh, when you don't discover, you don't invite, uh, you don't invent anything new. You just uh, reconsider the way you're actually seeing things. And uh, this is becoming really meta. So I would give an example. Uh, this is an example of a work I did for a French bank called uh, Credit Coopératif, uh, which is the bank uh, specialized in social good. And they have this transparency, this policy of transparency about their money flow. They could really tell where the money comes from and where it's going. And they have this, uh, they used to have this graph to talk about this, uh, which is not a really good graph in top of not being a really engaging one. So yeah, my work was really to find a way to better communicate and engage people with this uh, data available. And uh, I started by entirely redesigning the graph. I opted for a, a Sankey diagram, who's a good one to show uh, more complex distributions. And I play with this idea of perspective and horizontality by 
flipping the graph so that the flow becomes roads to explore. Uh, the user start by telling who he is, which corresponds to where the money comes from, and then where he'd like to see his money have an impact, uh, so it's where the money is going. And that highlights a path uh, to explore, just like in Google Street View. And there's those illustrations who are branded illustration of the bank, actually, uh, who act like points of interaction when you will have access to different kinds of content, like uh, article, video, podcast, data, and so on. And hopefully it's a good example of how you can switch from a very vertical uh, graph and way of learning, of teaching, to a more horizontal, immersive, uh, user-centric data experience with better accessibility, and that could really help to reach and engage and even maybe um, to contribute to some data empowerment. So yeah, in conclusion, I would say that for me, digitalization is truly a transversal art that uh, nourishes from the sharing and pooling of skills and knowledge uh, in between its actor, but it should also be the case for its audience. And I personally think that I find a way to overcome those uh, moments of despair inherent into any creative process by sharing with people having the same struggle uh, than me. Uh, because spoiler alert, we all do, and by uh, exchanging and collaborating with them, uh, not only because they could fill in the blanks for me, but also because I could fill in the blanks for them. And that really taught me to appreciate and feel proud and empowered by the things I achieved and the things I know, instead of focusing in a negative way on the things I don't. And now that I started to give classes again uh, in my new field of expertise, I'm waiting for the day where I be the one uh, in the class teaching how to calculate an interval confidence, a confidence interval, um, hoping to help other people to tame their own statistic enemy. Because in the end, I believe that there's probably no better teacher than the one who remembers that he or she doesn't know.